Dysmenorrhea, which is the medical term for menstrual cramps caused by uterine contractions, has a significant negative impact on the quality of life of people who menstruate, often resulting in a level of pain and side effects that can result in absenteeism from work, school, or other commitments. In the U.S., people who menstruate make up over a quarter of the population, and this number, when carried out to an economic translation, means that dysmenorrhea-related absenteeism can result in a loss of 600 million working hours, which corresponds to a loss of about $2 billion annually. One common treatment for dysmenorrhea is the application of heat to the muscles in the pelvic area. Currently, there's a gap of innovation of heat treatments for dysmenorrhea-related pain. Electric heating pads are bulky, difficult to use, and don't properly conform to the target muscle area. Microwavable heating pads also lack wearability and require several rounds of user reheating in their application. Adhesive heating pads are a relatively decent option in terms of portability and wearability, but because their heat is initiated by an irreversible chemical reaction, they are not reusable. Finally, hot water bottles like microwavable heating pads are neither wearable nor able to maintain heat and pose an additional risk of burning should the water bottle burst. Our device, Aradia, seeks to fulfill the need of a portable and wearable heating pad that is both discreet and able to initiate and maintain heat through an electric sword. Back in December, we demonstrated an ugly working prototype that employed the use of lithium batteries and compression fabric to create an electric, portable, and rechargeable heating pad as desired. In addition to the basic functions of the device, we incorporated heat insulation through layered fabrics and established a working safety temperature cutoff, which we previously demonstrated with a thermal imaging video. Since then, we've shifted our focus to minimizing our design and emphasizing its ease of use. To do this, we created a single enclosure unit for the battery pack and circuit, which is supported by a compression band on the side of the undergarment. The positioning of this enclosure makes the user controls for power and heat settings easily accessible. Furthermore, our heating pad and enclosure are now both more integrated into a sleek unit within the undergarment, which itself uses a combination of fabrics to fulfill different needs and functions of the user and device. Many of our choices in the design process for this semester were influenced by consultations from both clinicians and professional mentors. Dr. Wendy Grube, who works in women's health through Penn's Nursing School, advised us to include a heat cycling function to focus on more breathable fabrics in the undergarment and to provide three heat settings for users to choose from. Thinks, a company that designs undergarments for menstruation and other feminine hygiene products, emphasized to us that we should prioritize battery accessibility for the user, incorporate insulating fabric if possible, and keep the user in mind through all stages of design for our device. Finally, Richard James, a nursing liaison from the Penn Libraries that Dr. Grube referred us to, helped us to find useful literature searches that gave us a better understanding of clinical temperature ranges and safety regulations for devices like ours. First, in terms of wearability, both our clinical and design mentors emphasize the importance of selecting high-tech fabrics which are moisture-wicking, antimicrobial, and breathable. In regards to our battery, they said we should worry less about the number of hours it could last and focus more on integrating it into our circuit in a way that would make it easy to access and recharge. Our clinical mentor pointed out that in heat therapy, Patients are told to apply and remove their heat source in 20 minute intervals. This gave us a new feature to code into our design which would automate the process by cycling the heating pad on and off every 20 minutes while in use. Additionally, we are setting a goal that subject reported cramp severity while using a radia will be reduced by at least threefold when compared to cramps experienced while not using the device. We will conduct user testing to confirm this. Finally, when considering the safety risks of our device, we found that lithium-ion batteries pose a number of alarming safety concerns relating to fire and explosion. We decided to explore other types of rechargeable batteries to find a safer alternative. Our new specifications align with the previously described goals. We divided our specs into three categories based on the three primary features of our device. In our circuitry, we still use the MOSFET temperature control system developed last semester. We downsized our microcontroller from an Arduino to a Metro Mini and have coded the automatic heat cycling in 20 minute intervals. Also, we considered the physical layout of our circuit, then designed and 3D printed a custom enclosure to give the user easy access to buttons and LEDs. For the battery pack, we switched our battery type to a nickel metal hydride rechargeable AA's. While the battery life on these is shorter, they are safer for the user. 
We adjusted our spec to a target life of two to three hours and focused on creating a battery pack that is easily detachable for user-friendly recharging. Finally, we will use a combination of high quality fabrics, which are breathable, moisture wicking, and antimicrobial in the appropriate portions of the undergarment. There will also be a version of Aradia, which is incorporated into Thanks Period underwear. In our latest version, cycled heat therapy is hard coded into the device. We programmed a timer into the microcontroller, which will appropriately fluctuate PWM signals on and off in 20 minute intervals to control the current flowing into the heating pad and its resulting temperature output. This on off cycling will repeat automatically until the device runs out of battery power, providing timed heat therapy aligned with clinical recommendations. Here, using a thermal imaging camera, you can see a demonstration of the safety cutoff feature in our device. We also included a graphic to represent data which will be collected while testing the feature. This thermal imaging video shows the even and effective heating up process of Aradia. The graphic represents data which would be collected while testing this feature. The base of our prototype is a pair of cotton thinks. Thinks are made of 95% cotton and 5% elastin in the body, and the gusset is four layers, which are antimicrobial, moisture wicking, and odor controlling through the use of non-migratory silver nanoparticles. As this already aligns with the clinical advice we received for fabric choices, we decided why reinvent the wheel. Additionally, thinks are all double lined throughout so we can easily insert our heating pad into the inner layer without disrupting the outer aesthetic of the undergarment. One note though, our product could be manufactured in non-Thinx products as well if users aren't looking for the absorbance featured in Thinx, as long as the aforementioned traits are maintained in the new garment. Outside our heating pad, we are using a specialized fabric called Cold Gear Infrared, also recommended to us by Thinx. This lightweight fabric uses an interior thermal conductive pattern and embedded ceramic strip to absorb and retain body heat. Thus, putting this on the side of the heating pad not touching the body can help our efficiency in increasing and retaining heat while remaining slim and safe for users. Finally, we will be adding an additional compression band to the top of the garment to offset the weight of our circuitry and for therapeutic compression using a tactile fabric. Tactile is a compression fabric adapted from nylon, and it is three times stronger than cotton and dries eight times faster, making it ideal for holding up circuitry in a heat-based product. As just mentioned, we have shifted our batteries to be safer and easier to remove, with the trade-off of a shorter battery life. Now, instead of using two 3.7 volt lithium polymer batteries, we are using six rechargeable nickel metal hydride AA batteries. These new batteries will have a battery life in our product of about 2.5 hours, which is shorter than our initial specification, but as you will see in the next slide, they are now easier to remove, making battery changing and charging seamless. The container for these batteries is 19 millimeters tall, so it's still relatively slim against the body, and it only weighs about 7 ounces with the holder and all of the batteries combined. The new design has the battery holder case cover permanently affixed to the circuitry housing. Thus, to change the batteries, simply slide off the battery holder base from its cover, and they can easily be charged and replaced. This all comes together into a sleek garment featuring things as the base with additional tactile band at the top and a simple pocket to hold our circuitry, which features straightforward user interaction of a power button and three heat settings cycled through by clicking on a single button either one, two, or three times. As you can see here in this slightly more detailed rendering, the batteries can be easily removed for recharging, and here you can also see where in the garment our cold gear fabric and heating pad are placed. When we initially priced our product, the calculations were based on the data we had gathered from our bill of materials. This priced Aradia at $116.18, which is much higher than we anticipated or desired. However, we realized that many retailers often mark up their products instead of offering a base price. As you can see from the picture on the right, almost all of our vendors were big name companies, which added additional cost to the components we used to develop our prototype. However, we believe that if a radio were scaled up, the cost would decrease. To better quantify the adjusted price of our product, we applied metrics defined by the Penn IPD department, which state that multiplying each item by a third more accurately reflects the price that you would pay for a bulk order. At this cost, a radio would be sold at $38.73, which aligns more accurately with our target demographic and comparable products. 
With a more realistic price based on mass manufacturing costs, our goal is to price Aradia to products with a similar offering. Looking at the price range for Thinx products, their underwear ranges from $24 to $60. After talking with Thinx and receiving the offer to integrate our work with their undergarments, we outlined two different pricing options. For customers who wish to use the fabric designs and menstrual absorbency of Thinx, Aradia would be sold as the price of Thinx with the small added cost of our electrical components. However, for those who wish to use a regular cotton lining, the price would be decreased and look more similar to the IPD-based markdown price. This flexibility will allow us to more accurately tailor our products to our range of demographics so that all menstruating people can have access to Aradia. Because we stress the freedom that users would have to resume their daily lives using Aradia, it is important that it can withstand unexpected situations. Being able to offer a waterproof case for the battery pack and electrical components would ensure that if the user is caught in the rain, spills any liquid, or sweats through the wicking fabric, that a radio would still be protected. However, one challenge we do foresee is ensuring a full watertight seal while keeping the button interface easy to use and accessible for whoever is wearing a radio. Finally, as with any project, we plan to continually iterate through design criteria in order to optimize our final design. First, we plan to run user testing to assess the safety, wearability, and efficacy across our demographics. Based on the feedback from these tests, we can get a better idea on design criteria such as battery pack placement or button interface layout. Additionally, we will conduct tests to survey customers' willingness to pay at certain price points in order to better determine how to best offer a radia financially. And finally, we will continue to look for ways to downsize the battery pack by looking at the trade-off between battery life and overall battery pack size. Thank you for listening, and please let us know if you have any questions.